What's up everybody? It's Alex and RJ here from Backyard Sprouts. And in today's video, we're just gonna cover frequently asked questions we get in the comments section of our videos. And that is coming up next. Okay, so the first question that we get asked pretty frequently is what lights we use. Right, so lights, I, I don't really know how to explain this because we have seen so many different articles and videos and, and videos yeah. that contradict one another to kingdom come i will try and keep this as simple and as easy as you guys can follow look for a light that covers the light spectrum that is 6500k that's it that is it yeah you don't need anything else you can go I, we've seen people that go as low as 5500 what are these units of measurement? It's just literally the spectrum of light it covers and 6500 represents daylight. That's all it is. So don't get caught into the gimmicky stuff where they're charging you and they're labeling it as vegetative lights and right. it's strictly for indoor growing. That's BS. You can see from all our other videos that we're just growing normal lights Actually, the, the two racks in my current setup, one rack is fluorescent lights, 6500K, and one rack is LED, 6500K. Mm -hmm. No difference in growth or harvesting whatsoever. So just try and keep that in mind, you guys. You know, it's easy when you're first getting started. You're like, there's so many lights. Some people say to have it super close to the microgreens, and some people are saying to have it above the microgreens. Some are saying that the temperature of the lights matter. No, just literally keep it simple. Look for a light spectrum that covers daylight, that best represents daylight, which is 65K, and you're good to go. That's it. That's it with lights. We do still have a video that covers it more yeah. in detail, but the quick and dirty 6500K daylight representation, you're good. LED or fluorescent, it doesn't matter. LEDs will be more energy efficient. But and they don't it. get as hot, correct? Correct. And that's yeah. it, right? That has, So even that throws a temperature... <clears throat> A conversation off the off the table because LEDs don't get hot, but my fluorescents get hot, so it has nothing to do with the temperature. And they so. both grow well. So don't yeah. listen, don't 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 read it into the hype. And at my house, it is all LEDs. Yeah. So listen to backyard sprouts. Yep. Yeah. All right. So the next question we get is how much seed we use. Now we are going to be posting. We have a few videos out there on some of the micros, and you are going to see more to come, which will go into detail on how much we're using. But now, when we first started out, we were super anal about measuring each tray, whether or not it was going to be two ounces, one and a half ounces, six ounces, right? We made sure to measure and plant just that amount of seed on that tray. Now that we have been planting, you know, hundreds of trays, probably thousands at this point, honestly, yeah. Yeah. we eyeball it both because we've gotten used to what those particular seeds are supposed to be and what it should look like. And we've recently, you know, made some changes to some of them based off density and how we felt it came out. Mm -hmm. But with seeds, you really need to just look up, make sure you understand what the average amount of seed should be per tray, weigh it. We both have scales. I would highly recommend weighing it. Get a little cup, Low sells these plastic containers, which has measurements on them already, like the lines. And they're like, I don't know, two, five bucks for different sizes. And that's what we have. And we just use those and pour the seed in, weigh them. And that's how we started. Yep. Nothing fancy. Nothing yep. fancy. Like Alex said, in the very beginning, we were very uptight about it. We were like, Sunflower has to be exactly six ounces of right. seed and radish and broccoli. All those have to be completely 1.5 ounces of seed. Sure, starting off until you actually develop that skill where you planted hundreds of thousands that you can see and eyeball the density. But, you know, we I guess we can uh, provide you guys mm -hmm. in the future of what the densities were when we started out. That's good information yeah. because that's something Alex and I had to definitely Google and do our research on and how much this was until we got skillful enough to eyeball it. So we'll yeah. provide those numbers in a later video and we'll or just maybe we'll put on our website. That would be good. Yeah, our website or... We'll give you guys, we can do a PDF. You guys can download it and we can do something like that. Exactly. No, that'll be super helpful because that's what we were looking for when we started out. We had to watch like tons of videos and kind of guess some of them i was like oh it looks like 10 ounces but i can't tell so and then it was like okay well is that 10 ounces pre-soaking or after soaking because mm -hmm. it's a difference right especially with like pee mm -hmm. so we'll put it in a pdf and let you guys download it all right so the next big question we get is what trays do we use 
So when we first started out, we we're all about these Curtis Stone. I'm not sure what, I remember the size of those. They had, they're hardcore, they're super sturdy. Yeah. They have holes in the bottom, so they drain, which is nice in terms of like keeping the soil to the correct moisture level. Yeah, and, level. and, and, and that it had proper drainage. Yeah. <clears throat> and they were sturdy, I can't say enough. The ones we use are not sturdy. I mean, they're sturdy enough that we use them repeatedly, but they definitely, if you grab them or pick them up by like the wrong corner, they will break. Ours are 10 by 20 trays. They do not have holes in the bottom. We, as you guys have seen, had started off growing indoors. And if we had left trays with holes in the bottom, we would be vacuuming and sweeping every day. So <clears throat> yeah, we decided to veto the whole trays. Right, right. And, and so we got consciously we got pretty good at eyeballing how much water it mm -hmm. needed so that it wasn't super yeah. soggy or, you know, it, was, it wasn't so wet that it was promoting mold. We got very good at how much water it required. You know, th for the people I would suggest that has holes in the trays and then puts a non-hold one on the bottom, those are for people that have outdoor uh farms and yeah. they can just spray relentlessly they don't care or you don't even need to put the one with on holes if you're outside yeah. you can just use the one with holes but right. if you're growing indoors unless it's like a room or something you really don't care about it would be very difficult to maintain the ones with holes yeah again we keep it simple yeah. we use trays 10 20 mm -hmm. no holes that's yeah. it yeah. um we we did for a while try the holes and then we put the ones without holes underneath it to catch the water and you would find out that it was a pain in the to clean mm -hmm. those things were a pain because the roots would get stuck in them yep. it was just not worth it not worth the time so we just kept it under with trays no holes you get good at eyeballing how much water is required and yep. that's it all right next question we get <clears throat> what containers do we use what containers do we use? <laughs> so rj and i both did not want to put plastic as part of our business model like single-use plastics yes we were not we were not fans of that if you guys haven't seen the ocean cleanup about um boy and slat who's trying to clean up the great pacific garbage patch you should go watch it and then you will understand why single-use plastics are terrible so we made it early on a decision to make sure that we used some sort of eco-friendly containers and i did a lot of research being that i'm in supply chain and find this stuff interesting I did a lot of research on different containers and found a company called Vegware that we really like and that's who we use now. But when we first started out, we found a company called um, Good Start Packaging. Now Good Start, there's nothing wrong with the quality of their packaging. It was fantastic and the prices were fine, pretty comparable to Vegware. The only issue with Good Start, which you can see in our container video, which we have up, which we'll go into more detail, is that they had bumps on top of the containers and our labels look terrible, right? Yeah. On the small ones, the bigger ones, we had no problem, yeah, right? But w on the farmer's market one, where they weren't buying half pound micros, yep. we needed to use the smaller containers. And the smaller containers, for some unknown reason to us, I'm sure they have a good reason, they had bumps and designs, which was super cool, but not label friendly. Yep. That was the issue. And we had to, <laughs> Alex loved yep. putting them on top. It didn't bother mm. her. I'm OCD AF. <laughs> and so I was seeing mm. the creases. So what I did was I flipped it upside down and it was killing Alex because it was upside down, but it had a flatter side. So but then was... you had to open the container upside down. So we both just agreed it wasn't working. Right. Found Vegware. Vegware has been awesome. Our containers are eco-friendly, biodegradable, 100% plant-based. Um, they last in the fridge. They We haven't had any issues with them. I have put them in my compost pile and it's been awesome. So we highly recommend them and we can link them below for you guys. Yep, Vegware obviously is yep. label friendly and if you want to see time. the sizes sorry to cut you off but if you want to see the sizes our video we went through all the different sizes we use mm -hmm. and the changes in variety and what you can see with those yep super label friendly yeah so the last big question that we get asked bonus pretty frequently question. yeah this is bonus and especially at the farmers markets all the time is are we dating <laughs> and, answer is no yeah we are not no. dating so we get it a lot on on youtube like you guys are the best couple and i like like we're not dating. <laughs> and I'm like, we're not dating. Or we'll be in the farmer's market and they're like, yeah. wow, you guys are awesome. And we're like, not dating. Yep. Strictly business partners. Alex and I met in Krav. Yep. Uh, Krav Maga. So it's a formal martial arts that we that we attend um, and just developed a good friendship. And then realized that our 
goals and stuff aligned and started a business. That's it. Yeah. So that's a frequently asked question. What's the word I'm looking for? It's something people always ask, want to know about. Yeah. They're curious. Yeah. And it's natural, yeah. right? It, you, you, it's, it's a natural thing to yeah. assume. But no, nope. yeah. if you guys are single, Alex is single, so... Backer Sprouts Dating Services. <laughs> Shameless vlog. <block. laughs> but, yeah. yep. That's our next venture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A Gardner's dating app. Oh, a Gardner's Tinder. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> perfect. We hope you guys enjoyed that video. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. As always, Alex and I are trying to build a community of like minds. So we'd absolutely love it if you guys hit that like and subscribe button. So you guys get the latest on our urban farming adventure. And we will see you guys next time. Okay, so the first question that we get a lot in the comments are what lights we use. You want to answer that one, Alex? <laughs> <laughs>